coming who you are it is not being homeless that matters my rich dad said it is about who you are keep striving and you become somebody quit and you also become somebody but not the same person for those of you contemplating going from job security to financial security all i can offer you is word of encouragement for kim and me it took being homeless and desperate before i found the courage to move forward that was our part but it definitely does not have to be your path as i described earlier there are ready made systems that can help you cross the bridge to right side of the quadrant the real issue is the changes you go through internally and who you become in the process for some people the process is easy for others journey is impossible money is a drug rich dad would always say to mike and me money is a drug main reason he refused to pay us while we worked for him was because he never wanted us to become addicted to working for money if you become addicted to money he said it is hard to break that addiction when i was calling him from california as a grown man to ask him for money he was not about to break a pattern he had started with mike and me and when we were 9 he did not give us money as a kid he was not able to start now instead he continued to be tough and guide me away from addiction of working for money he called money a drug because he had observed people who were happy and they had money and upset or moody when they did not just as heroin addicts get high when they inject the drug they also get moody and violent when they don't have it be careful of money's addictive power he often said once you get used to receiving it that addiction keeps you attached to the way you got it if you received put another way if you receive money as an employee then you tend to get accustomed to the way of acquiring it if you get used to generating money by being self employed it is often difficult to break the attachment to earning money in that way and if you get used to government handouts that too is a hard pattern to break the hardest part about moving from left side to the right side is the attachment you have the mo- have the way you have been earning money said rich dad it is more than breaking the a habit it's breaking an addiction that is why he stressed to mike and me to never work for money he insisted we learn to create our own systems as a way of acquiring money the patterns for kim and me the hardest part in trying to become people who generated income in the b quadrant was that all of our past conditioning was still holding us back it was tough when friends said why are you doing this why don't you just get a job it was even more difficult because there was a part of us that also wanted to go back in the security of a paycheck rich dad explained to mike and me that the world of money was one large system and was and we as individuals learn how to operate in a certain pattern within that system for example employee works for a system self employed is a system business owner creates a system and investor invests mo- invest money in the system a pattern rich dad was talking about was pattern in our body mind and soul of how we naturally gravitate to the subject of money when a person feels the need for money rich dad explained employee will automatically look for a job and self employed will often do something alone business owner will create or buy system that produces money an investor will look for opportunity to invest in an asset that produces more money 
why it is hard to change a pattern the reason it is hard to change a pattern said rich dad is because money today is essential for life in the agrarian age money was not that important because land could provide food shelter warmth and water without money once we moved into cities during industrial age money signified life itself today even water costs money rich dad went on to explain that when you begin to move from let's say the e quadrant to business quadrant the part of you that is addicted to being an employee or afraid that life will end begins to kick and fight back it is like drowning a person beginning to fight for air on starving man who will eat anything to survive it is this battle that goes on inside of you that makes it so hard it is the battle between who you no longer are and who you want to become that is the problem this dad explained to me over the phone the part of you that still seeks security is in war with with the part of you that wants freedom only you can decide which one will win you will either build that business or you will go back to finding a job forever find your passion do you really want to move forward ask rich dad yes i said hurriedly have you forgotten what you set out to do have you for- forgotten about your passion and what caused you to get into predestinement in the first place ask rich dad oh i replied a little startled i have had, had forgotten so i stood there at pay phone clearing my head so i could remember what got me into this mess in the first place you have more worried about your own personal survival than keeping your dream alive your fear has pushed aside your passion the best way to keep going is to keep the flame in your heart going always remember what you set out to do and the trip will be easy start worrying more about yourself and fear begin to eat away at your soul passion builds business not fear you have got this far you you are close so don't turn back now remember what you set out to do keep the memory in your heart and keep the flame going you can always quit so why quit now with that rich dad wished me luck and hung up the phone he was correct i had forgotten why i set out in this journey i had forgotten about my dream and always my fears to fill my head as well as my heart just few years earlier there had been a movie entitled flash dance the theme song said something about take your passion and make it happen well i had forgotten my passion it was now time to make it happen or go back and forget about it i stood there for a while and again i heard rich dad's last words you can always quit so why quit now i decided to delay quitting until i had made things happen becoming a teacher who owned the system i stood at the phone booth after rich dad and i had hung up my fears and lack of success were beating me and my dreams had been pushed aside my dreams of cracking a different kind of school system an educational program for people who wanted to be entrepreneurs and investors as i stood there my mind drifted back to my days in high school when i was 15 years old my high school guidance counselor asked me what you are going to do when you grow up are you going to become a teacher like your dad looking straight at my counselor my answer was straight forward strong and filled with conviction i will never be a teacher becoming a teacher is the last thing i would ever do i did not dislike school i hated it
I absolutely hated being forced to sit and listen to someone. I did not particularly like or respect speak for months on a subject I had no interest in. I fidgeted, screamed, caused problems in the back of the room unless I just left instead of going to the class. So when my guidance counselor asked me if I was planning to seek a career, following my teacher's footsteps as a teacher nearly jumped out of my skin. Skin. Little did I know at the time that passion is a combination of love and hate. I loved learning, but I hated school. I absolutely detested sitting there and being programmed into becoming something I did not want to be. I was not alone. Notable quotes on education. Winston Churchill once said, I am always ready to learn, but I do not always like, like being taught. John Updike said, the founding fathers in their wisdom decided that children were an unnatural strain on their parents, so they provided jails called school, equip, equipped with tortures called education. Norman Douglas said, education is state control manufactory of ecos. H. L. Melkin said, School days, I believe, are the unhappiest in whole span of human existence. They are full of dull, unintelligible tasks, new and un unpleasant ordinance, and brutal violation of common sins and common decency. Galileo said, You cannot teach a person anything. You can only help him find it with himself. Mark Twain said, I never let schooling interfere with my education. Albert Einstein said, There is too much education altogether, especially in American schools. Gift from my educated dad. The person who shared these quotes with me was my highly educated dad, but poor dad. He also despised the school system, although he did well in it. He became teacher because he had dreams of changing the 300 years old system but instead system crushed him he took his passion tried to change the system and ran into brick wall it was system that too many people were making money in and no one wanted it changed although there was a lot of people talking about the need for change Maybe my guidance counsellor was psychic because years later I did indeed follow in my father's footsteps. I just didn't follow him into the same system. I was talking I was taking that same passion and creating my own system. That is why I was homeless. My passion was to create an educational system that taught people differently. When my educated dad learned that Kim and I were struggling financially, doing our best to set up our own educational system. He sent us those quotes, scribbled across top of the pages of quotes were these words, keep going, love dad. Up until that moment, I never knew how much my educated dad had hated the system and what it did to young people. But after his gesture of encouragement, things began to make sense. The passion that was driving me then was the same passion that had driven him years earlier. I was just like my real dad. I had unwillingly picked up the torch from him. I was a teacher at the core, maybe that is why. I hated the system so much. In hindsight, I had become both dads. From my rich dad, I had learned the secrets of being capitalist. From my highly educated dad, I inherited the passion for teaching. And given the combination of two dads, I could now do something about educational system. I did not have desire or ability to change the current system. 
but i did not but i did have the knowledge to create my own system the years of training began to pay off the years of training began to pay off for years my rich dad groomed me to be a person who created businesses and business system the business i set up in 1977 was a manufacturing company we were one of the first companies to produce the nylon and velcro suffer wallets that come in bright colors we followed that product with the shoe pocket a miniature wallet also made of nylon and velcro that attached to the shoe laces of running shoes in 1978 jogging was a new craze and joggers always wanted a place to put their keys and to carry money or id cards in case they got hurt that is why i designed the shoe pocket and marketed it to the world our metroic success was phenomenal but soon the passion for this product line and business drifted away it began to weaken once my little company began to be pounded by foreign competition countries like taiwan korea and hong kong were shipping products identical to mine and were wiping out the market we had developed their prices were so low that there was no way we could compete there were retailing products for less than it cost cost us to manufacture them our little company was faced with dilemma fight them or join them the partners realized we could not fight the competition the companies flooding the market with cheap products were too strong a vote was taken and we decided to join them the tragedy was in order to stay afloat we had to let go most of our faithful and hard working staff that broke my heart when i went over to inspect new factories we contracted with for our manufacturing in korea and taiwan again my soul died a little the conditions these young workers were forced to work in were cruel and inhuman i saw five workers stacked on the top of the other in space where we would only allow one worker my conscience began to uh, bother me deeply not only for the workers we let go in america but for the workers overseas who were now working for us although we had solved the financial problem of foreign competition and began to make a lot of money my heart was no longer in the business and the business began to sag its spirit was gone because my spirit was gone i no longer wanted to become rich if i meant exploding exploiting so many low paid workers i began to think about educating people to be owners of business not employees of business at the age of 32 i i was beginning to become a teacher but didn't realize at the time business began to decline not due to lack of systems but because of lack of heart or passion by the time kim and i started out on our new business venture the wallet company was gone downsizing coming in 1983 i was invited to give a talk to mba class at university of hawaii i gave them my views on job security they did not like what i said in a few years many of you will lose your jobs or be forced to work for less and less money with less and less security because my work caused me to travel the world i witnessed first hand the combined power of cheap labor and innovations from technology i began to realize that worker in asia or europe or russia or south america was really competing with workers in america i knew the idea of high pay and safe secure job for workers and middle managers 
was an idea whose time had passed big companies would soon have to make cuts both in numbers of people and in dollars they paid to workers just to be able to compete globally i was never asked back to the university of hawaii a few years later the word downsizing became standard practice every time a big company merged and worker becomes redundant downsizing occurred every time owners wanted to make their shareholders happy downsizing occurred with each downsizing i saw people at top to get richer and richer and people at bottom pay the price Every time I heard someone say I am send, sending my child to good school so he or she can get a good safe secure job I cringed Being prepared for a job is a good idea for the short term but it is not enough for the long term Slowly but surely I was becoming a teacher Build a system around your passion although my manufacturing company I turned around and was doing well again. My passion was gone. My rich dad summed up my frustration when he said school days are over. It is time to build around your heart. Build a system around your passion. Let the manufacturing company go and build what you know you must build. You have learned well from me, but you are still your father's son. You and your dad are teachers deep in your souls. Kim and I packed up everything and moved to California to learn new teaching methods. So we could create a business around those methods. Before we could get the business off the ground, we ran out of money and were out on street. It was that phone call to my rich dad, my wife standing by me. anger at myself and rekindling of the passion that got us off the mess we were in soon we were back at building company the company was an educational company using teaching methods almost exactly opposite of what traditional schools use instead of asking students to sit still we encourage them to be active instead of teaching via lecture we taught by playing games we insisted our teachers to be fun instead of teachers we sought out of business people who had actually started their own companies and taught our style of teaching instead of grading the students the students graded the teacher if the teacher got a lousy grade the teacher was either put through another in intensive training program or asked to leave age educational background gender and religion religious beliefs were not criteria all we ask for was sincere desire to learn quickly although we mainly taught adults we had many young people some 16 years old learning right outside highly paid well educated 60 year old business executives instead of competing on test we ask them to cooperate on teams then we had a team taking a test competing against other teams taking the same test instead of striving for grades we bet money winner take all the competition and desire to do well as a team was fierce the teacher did not have to motivate the class the teacher just had to get out of the way once the learning competition was on instead of quiet at test time there was yelling screaming laughter and tears people were excited about learning they were turned on by learning and they wanted to learn more we focused on teaching just two subjects entrepreneurship and investing the b and i side of the quadrant the people who wanted to learn these subjects in our style of education showed up in the droves 
we did not we did no advertising everything spread by word of mouth the people who showed up were people who wanted to create jobs not people looking for jobs once i made up my mind not to quit that night at the phone booth things began to move forward in less than 5 years we had multi million dollar business with 11 offices throughout the world we had built a new system of education and market loved it our passion had made it happen because passion and a good system overcome fear and past programming a teacher can be rich whenever i hear teachers say they are not paid enough i feel for them the irony is that there are many products of their own systems programming they look at being teacher from point of view of the e quadrant rather than b or i quadrant remember you can be anything you want to be in any of quadrants even a teacher we can be anything we want most of us have potential to be successful in all four quadrants it is it all depends on how determined we are to be successful as my rich dad said passion builds businesses not fear the problem of changing quadrants is often found in our past conditioning many of us came from families where emotion of fear was used as a prime motivator to get us to think and act in a certain way for example did you do your homework if you don't do your homework you will flunk out of school and all your friends will laugh at you if you keep making faces your face will get stuck in that position and the classic if you don't get good grades you won't get safe secure job with benefits well today many people have gotten good grades but there are fewer safe secure jobs and even fewer with benefits like retirement plans so many people even those with good grades need need to mind their own business and not just look for a job where they will mind someone else business it is risky on the left side i know many friends who still seek security in a job or a position ironically the march of technology continues moving at an even faster pace to keep up in the job market each person will need to constantly be trained in the latest technology if you are going to be reeducated anyway who not spend some time educating yourself on skills needed on the right side of quadrant if people could see what i see when i travel the world they would not be looking for more security security is a myth learn something new and take on this brave new world don't hide from it it is also risky for self employed people in my opinion if they get sick injured or die their income is directly impacted as i get older i meet more self employed people of my age who are physically mentally and emotionally burned out from hard work those the more fatigue a person endures the less secure they become and the risk of them having accident also go, goes up it is more secure on right side the irony is life is actually more secure on the right side of the quadrant for example if you have a secure system that produces more and more money with less and less work then you really do not need a job or need to worry about losing your job or need to live life below your means instead of living below your means expand your means to make more money simply expand the system and hire more people people who are high level in investors 
आर नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट मार्केट गोइंग अप और गोइंग डाउन बिकॉज देर नॉलेज विल नॉट अलाउ देम टू मेक मनी इधर वे इफ देर इज अ मार्केट क्रैश एंड और डिप्रेशन इन द नेक्स्ट थर्टी ईयर्स मेनी बेबी बूमर्स विल पैनिक एंड लूज मच ऑफ मनी दे हैड सेट असाइड फॉर रिटायरमेंट इफ दैट हैपन्स इन देअर ओल्ड एज इंस्टेड ऑफ रिटायरिंग दे विल हैव टू वर्क वर्क फॉर एज लॉन्ग एज दे कैन एज फॉर फियर ऑफ लूजिंग प्रोफेशनल इन्वेस्टर्स आर पीपल हु दिस क्लिटिल ऑफ देअर मनी एंड येट स्टील मेक हायर रिटर्न्स इट इज पीपल हु नो लिटिल अबाउट इन्वेस्टिंग हु टेक द रिस्क एंड अर्न द लिस्ट इन द रिटर्न फ्रॉम माय पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑल द रिस्क ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ क्वाड्रन numbers reduce risk without those simple lessons from my rich dad i doubt if i could have taken my passion and built the educational system of my dreams without his insistence on financial literacy and accuracy i know i could not have invested as wisely with so little of my own money and earn such a high return i always remembered you can go fast but don't take shortcuts to reduce your taxes buy a bigger house and get deeper into debt so you can get a tax write off your home should be your largest investment you would better buy now because the prices always go up get rich slowly live below your means if you put if you put the time to study and learn about subjects required on the right side of quadrant such statement won't make much sense it might make sense to someone on the left side of quadrant but not to someone on the right side you can do anything you like go as fast as you like make as much money as you like but you have to pay the price you can go quickly remember there there are no shortcuts